and to use a, a, a notation that we, we had from limit notation as x goes to infinity, let's say, tan inverse x is equal to pi over 2. That's an example of one value that's of interest in addition to the uh, finite values. OK, so now the first ingredient that we're going to need is we're going to need the derivative of the tangent function. So I'm going to recall for you, and you haven't, maybe haven't worked this out yet, but I hope that many of you have, that if you take the derivative with respect to y of tan y, so this you do by the quotient rule. So you, this is of the form u over v, right? You use the quotient rule. So I'm going to skip this, OK? But what you get in the end is some marvelous simplification. And it comes out to be cosine squared y here, 1 over cosine squared. You can recognize the cosine squared from the fact that you should get v squared in the denominator. And somehow the numerator all cancels and simplifies to 1, OK? And this is also known as secant squared y. All right, so that's something that uh, if you haven't done it yet, you're going to have to do this as an exercise. All right. OK, so we need that ingredient. And now we're just going to differentiate our equation. And what do we get? We get, again, d by dy tan y times dy dx uh, is equal to 1. Or if you like, 1 over cosine squared y times, in the other notation, y prime is equal to 1. So, so right, so I've used, I've just used the, the formula that I just wrote down there. All right, now all I have to do is solve for y prime. It's cosine squared y. OK? Unfortunately, this is not the form that we ever want to leave these things in. Again, this is the same problem we had with that ugly square root expression or with any of the others. We want to rewrite it in terms of x. Our original question was, what is d by dx of tan inverse of x? Now, so far, we have the following answer to that question. It's cosine squared of tan inverse x. Okay? Now, this is a, a, this is a correct answer, but way too complicated. Now, that doesn't mean that if you took a random collection of functions, you wouldn't end up with something this complicated. But these particular functions, these beautiful circular functions involved with trigonometry, all have very nice formulas associated with them. And this simplifies tremendously. And so one of the skills that you need to do to, to develop when you're dealing with um, trig functions is to simplify this. And so let's see now that Expressions like this all simplify. So here we go. Uh, there's only one formula, one ingredient that we need to use to do this, and then we're going to draw a diagram. So the ingredient, again, is the original defining relationship that tan y is equal to x. So tan y equals x can be encoded in a right triangle in the following way. Here's the right triangle, and tan y means that y should be represented as an angle. And then its tangent is the ratio of this vertical to this horizontal side. So I'm just going to pick two values that work, namely x and 1. Those are the simplest ones. So I've encoded this equation in this picture. 
And now all I have to do is figure out what the cosine of y is in this right triangle here. In order to do that I need to figure out what the hypotenuse is. But that's just square root of 1 plus x squared. And now I can read off what the, the uh, cosine of y is. So the cosine of y is 1 divided by the hypotenuse. So it's 1 over square root, whoops, yeah, 1 plus x squared. That's it. Yeah. OK? And so cosine squared is just 1 over 1 plus x squared. And so our answer over here, the preferred answer, which is way simpler than what I wrote up there, is that d by dx of tan inverse x is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. 